Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your souls yes take my yoke upon you for my burden is light <clears throat> for my burden is light oh yes take his yoke upon you for his burden is light good morning to each and every one of you i hope you are feeling better miss sharon let us know <clears throat> so we can keep you in prayer. We rebuke these headaches in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Be gone from our sister and be filled fresh and new with the Holy Ghost. So, shalom on this March 16. I agree with you, Miss Connie. And we are closing in here on their wonderful feast of Purim when they read the entire book of Esther. And it would be really good if all of us read fresh the book of Esther because they are celebrating. Let's, let's make that connection with them, that, that sweet, sweet fellowship that we feel when we make an effort. It's only 10 chapters long. It doesn't take you very long to read the book of Esther and my goodness, what an amazing story. <clears throat> well, turning our attention to right now, we will be reading from Bamidbar, Numbers chapter 24 and 25. Numbers 24 on this March 16. March 16. Debbie Quick is watching. Nice to have you with us, Debbie. And Kay and Melissa and Kathy and Connie. And I hope I didn't miss anybody else. If I did, good morning to you. Now when Balaam, we're talking about this man Balaam here, saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go as at other times to seek to use sorcery. Well, that's good, isn't it? But he set his face toward the wilderness, and Balaam raised his eyes, and he saw Israel encamped according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him. That's the spirit we want, isn't it? And then he took up his oracle, and he said, The utterance of Balaam the son of Beor, the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened, the utterance of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. That's a good way to have it, isn't it? A prostrate spirit of humbleness before the Lord, but our eyes wide open. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel, like valleys that stretch out, like gardens by the riverside, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. He shall pour water from his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. The king... <clears throat> shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brings him out of Egypt. He has strength like a wild ox. He shall consume the nations, his enemies. 
He shall break their bones and pierce them with his arrows. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? Nobody goes to rouse the lion, do they? Oh, oh, they don't want to have to deal with him. Blessed is he who blesses you, and cursed is he who curses you. And then Balak's anger was aroused against Balaam, and he struck his hands together. And Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and look, you have bountifully blessed them these three times. Now therefore, flee to your place. I said I would greatly honor you, but in fact, the Lord has kept you back from honor. Mm, maybe not really, though. Kram yoman. Samuel. So Balaam said to Balak, Did I not also speak to your messengers whom you sent to me, saying, If Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord to do good or bad of my own will. What the Lord says, that I must speak. And now indeed, I am going to my people. Come, I will advise you what this people will do to your people in the latter days. How about that? And we are here, aren't we, at these latter days spoken of. So he took up his oracle, and he said, The utterance of Balaam the son of Beor, and the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened, the utterance of him who hears the words of God, and has the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of tumult. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also, his enemies, shall be a possession. While Israel does valiantly, out of Jacob one shall have dominion and destroy the remains of the city. And then he looked on Amalek, and he took up his oracle, and he said, Amalek was first among the nations, but shall be last until he perishes. And then he looked on the Kenites, and he took up his oracle, and he said, Firm is your dwelling place, and your nest is set in the rock. Nevertheless, Cain shall be burned. How long until Asher? carries you away captive. And then he took up his oracle, and he said, Alas, who shall live when God does this? But ships shall come from the coast of Cyprus, and they shall afflict Asher, and afflict Eber, and so shall Amalek, until he perishes. So Balaam rose and departed and returned to his place. Balak also went his way. And we move right along to chapter 25 of Numbers, Bamidbar. Now Israel remained in Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel was joined to Baal of Peor, and the anger of the Lord was aroused 
against Israel. And then the Lord said to Moses, Moshe, take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. Wow! How about that? So Moshe said to the judges of Israel, Every one of you kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peor. And indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose from among the congregation and he took a javelin in his hand and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her body. Wow. Do you get that? So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel, and those who died in the plague were 24,000. And then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel because he was zealous with my zeal among them so that I did not consume the children of Israel in my zeal. Therefore say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace. And it shall be to him and his descendants after him a covenant of an everlasting priesthood because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. And oh, doesn't that just bring to your mind what Jesus has done for us? He did the atonement that we needed once and for all. Nothing is needed now except to repent of your sins and accept Jesus as your personal Savior and walk and live in him. He already paid our price. Now the name of the Israelite who was killed, who was killed with the Midianite woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, a leader of a father's house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Cosby, the daughter of Zor. He was head of the people of a father's house in Midian. So we have also taken a hold of the leadership, haven't we? And then the Lord spoke to Moshe, Moses saying, Harass the Midianites and attack them, for they harassed you with their schemes by which they seduced you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a leader of Midian, their sister who was killed in the day of the plague because of Peor. Wow, that was a fierce reading for today, wasn't it? And we move right along to Lucilus, Luke, the wonderful book of Luke. We are in chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Luke 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone, to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee 
out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. We would say Bethlehem. Bethlehem, house of bread is what that means. Because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary. And Scott has reminded us that they would say Miriam, Mary, his beloved wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. Kathy says she's not hearing. Screen frozen. Is it for the rest of you? Are you hearing? And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Thank you very much for letting me know. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. Jesus. The name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem, Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, and here we have a wonderful quote, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit 
was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him in his arms and he blessed God. And he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. And the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Wow. Wow. You know, we just can't ever read the entire birth and story of Jesus enough. We need it fresh, don't we? Fresh in our minds, fresh in our spirits every day. We move right along, you precious sons and daughters of the Most High God, to Psalm 59. Psalm 59. This is another mictum of David when Saul sent men and they watched the house in order to kill him. I'll bet that music was fierce when that chief musician said it to the tune, Do not destroy. Deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God. Defend me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. And save me from bloodthirsty men. For look, they lie in wait for my life. The mighty gather against me, not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves through no fault of mine. Awake to help me, and behold, you therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Awake to punish all the nations. Do not be merciful to any wicked transgressors. And we have that great word, Selah, right after that. Stop, prostrate yourself. Think on these words. At evening they return, they growl like a dog and go all around the city. Indeed, they belch with their mouth. Swords are in their lips, for they say, Who hears? But you, O Lord, shall laugh at them. You shall have all the nations in derision. I will wait for you, O you, his strength, for God is my defense. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. Do not slay them, lest my people forget. Scatter them by your power and bring them down. O oh, Lord, our shield for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips. Let them even be taken in their pride and for the cursing and lying which they speak. Consume them in wrath. 
consume them that they may not be and let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. Selah. And at evening they return, they growl like a dog and go all around the city. They wander up and down for food and they howl if they are not satisfied. But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning for you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my defense, my God of mercy. Oh, and isn't he, though, a God of mercy? We wrap it up with Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is safety in a multitude. One will correct another, won't they? Until the word that is spoken is satisfying because everyone agrees then that it is truth. Proverbs eleven fourteen, where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. What a beautiful, beautiful proverb. Wow. We can chew on that one all day long, right? Well, let's all end up in prayer. Many people from many places. And God bless each and every one of you. Praise God, Miss Kathy. I'm glad it's working again for you. You're just in time for the prayer. Precious Lord, wonderful, wonderful Adonai, Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for your precious word. It's a delight to get up and face a new day that you have given and fill ourselves fresh and new with your word. With your word, Lord, that we might meditate on your word and, and not all of the problems of the world, not all of the unfinished problems that you and I might be facing. But we will have faith then to trust the Lord with each and every one. And so, Father, we bless you. We thank you for coming. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for anointing your own word. Please, Lord, anoint this word. It's yours. Take it where you would. We are after, Lord, the whole earth, hearing God's word. For then you will come. So we must be about our Father's business. Help us. Help us, precious God. Help us to have a zeal and a longing and a thirsting for you and for more of you. Father God, <clears throat> we hold up Israel. We hold up the entire nation, the country, all of your people who are you are yet bringing home. I wonder who's coming today. Oh, I wish I were at the airport to see them get off that plane and, and crying, fall into the arms of, of waiting people, hugging them, welcoming, welcoming them. Oh, that is the most wonderful airport in the world to see all that happening. Father God, let all the planes be flying safely today, bringing more of your people home. Let there be peace in Jerusalem. We pray for her peace. We pray for her people. We pray for the Knesset, <clears throat> the ruling body. Please, Lord, lead them to your will. 
to your will. And Father God, we hold up America to you. And Lord, we are asking that all things that were deceitful, that are lies, that have worked against America and her people, bringing it, trying to bring it down. Father God, we thank you that you are revealing those things. You are revealing those people who do not have America's heart at the center of their life and their jobs. Father God, we pray once again that you would take those out and that you would put righteous people in. Righteous people, Lord. I'm praying already for an honest election coming up. Father God, put honest people in every place that will guard and maintain this great, great gift you have given us of being able to vote that the whole nation of people together, that is the ruling force. We bless you for it, Lord. We thank you that we live in America. And Lord, we are earnestly praying <clears throat> for all the freedoms that you gave us. You gave us, Lord. We are praying that all of these freedoms will be fought for and preserved, will be uplifted, that we won't be lazy, we won't be disconnected, but that we will care and we will continue to be a light to all the nations. <clears throat> Lord, I hold up Ukraine. <clears throat> I hold up Russia. And I remember fondly my trip to Russia and how precious the people were, very precious. It's just evil people up in rulership roles, Lord, that we are praying for. But the common peoples of the world are wonderful. We'd ask, Lord, you would bless the people of Russia, the people of Ukraine, the people of all of Europe, the people of the world, Lord. Smile on them and let them hear the word of God today, that they would come to you, that many would be born again. Many would come and bow down and turn over all, all of the problems, all of the cares, and trust you. Trust you to bring answers. Father, I hold up my special friend, Philip, and Lord, I'm asking that you relieve him of this unbearable pain that he has been suffering for years. Father God, please touch Philip in a very special way and relieve that pain. Father, we pray for our sister Sharon. We rebuke these migraine headaches and these attacks on her eyes and on her whole being. And Lord, we pray for healing to touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, I'd ask you to hear all the prayer requests of each and every one today. And we are determined. We will sing unto you. Oh, yes, Lord, we will sing unto you. We will lift you high. We will sing a new song. We will sing a new song. I mean, just grab a note and sing a new song. Have a beautiful day in the Lord. I love each and every one of you so much. Thank you for coming, and God bless you. Bye-bye.